On Earth, there are two dominant flower animals, birds and insects. Although birds put their wings 1 to 20 hertz, and all type of insects like dragonflies, locusts, flap up 10 to 30 hertz. New type of insects like bees and flies and mosquitoes put their wings at more than 100 to even 1,000. What makes the difference? Before that, I'm gonna talk about what we slipped the flapping frequencies of birds and all type of insects. They use two types of muscles to move their wings. Muscles to move wings upwards and downwards. When flapping at low frequency, there is no problem because each muscle can be activated and deactivated in turn. But when flapping at high frequency, the two muscles fight against each other because it takes time to deactivate muscles. Well, then, how flies and bees break the limits? Two specialized mechanisms. Fly muscle and the exoskeleton. First, flight muscle. This muscle activates itself when it's stressed. It does not need to be controlled by the nervous systems. This property is called stretch activation. Second, the exoskeleton. The flight muscle attached not to their wings, but to their elastic exoskeleton, which acts like a spring. The interaction between the muscles and the exoskeleton deforms the exoskeleton at high frequency and make it possible to flap their wings beyond the limits. And this vibration is called self-excited vibration. And in our previous research, we made a mathematical model of this vibration and imply the frequency caused by the interaction makes side its natural frequency. In this research, by building devices that have similar property to the exoskeleton and the fly muscles, we try to improve our theory and apply it in the development of a tiny, tiny flying robots. As the same approach as before, we imitate them separately. Regarding the exoskeleton, we use a ring made of palm resin because it can be seen as a mass spring damper system. Regarding the flight muscles, actually that was a helper because stretch activation property is poorly understood. So, so we approach by imitating this mechanical output. And here is the mechanical output of flight muscles. On left figure, you see the relationship between the fly muscle force and its displacement. It looks like a banana. That means that when it's stretched, the muscle force goes up and more powerfully it shortens, more powerfully it contracts. On right figure, you see the muscle force flow less displacement. And we try to build an actuator that output like this. And here is the actuator made of those stuffs and essentially this is a spring just a spring but when it's shortened the DC motor is turned on and it strengthens this contract force
And here is the output of this device. You see it's similar. When it's stressed, the muscle force goes up and more powerful it contracts. And also the muscle force flow less displacement. Finally, assembling two devices, a skeleton and a flat muscles. What will happen? There you go. The skeleton vibrates with no controller, with no specific input. It excites itself just by simple mechanical properties. And here is the analysis of the vibration. The displacement goes up as applying voltage. Almost linear. However, the frequency sustains itself on its natural frequency. Regardless of how much voltage applied Apply. This is interesting because natural frequencies are excited just by simple mechanical properties. And it seems magically favorable to a tiny flying robots as well as real insects. And now we are trying to this mechanism. Now we are trying to put this mechanism in this size and make it more powerful enough to move the wings to fly. And here is the outlook for the future researches. Thank you.